These are five tips to improve at Lancelot, the newest Smite God. We're going to explain the abilities, dive into some builds, and then go into the top five tips. So stick around if you want them all, and there should be timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead to any particular sections. And of course, while you're down there, a like and subscribe will really help the channel out. Thank you in advance. Lancelot's passive is Camelot's Quest. This is a nice and forgettable passive, as you simply gain one stack on your passive bar for each god killer assist, or five for each minion killer assist, to a maximum of 60. While you are regular Lancelot on the floor, this reduces the damage from enemy basic attacks received in front of you by 0.2% per stack to a max of 12% as he blocks with his shield. While mounted on your horse, this gives you 0.2 movement speed per stack, so yet again a maximum of 12%. Lancelot's first ability is Piercing Thrust. For those of you aware of it, this works a lot like Achilles' third ability. You dash directly forwards, dealing damage, and if you hit an enemy, minion or god both count, you can use it again for free. This is the ability I recommend maxing first as well, as when you reach max rank, this is 480 base power, with some crazy scaling too. Much more damage than your next ability. Lancelot's second ability is Skilled Strikes. It is a two-part attack where you do a small cone of damage in front of you while knocking enemies back a little, then you do a larger cone of damage right after it. You actually deal 15% extra damage on the second hit if you catch the enemy between the two cone areas right at the tip of your second swing, and in doing this actually increases the damage from this skill to over 500 base power. But this is so difficult to hit and it basically won't ever be happening consistently, so it's more like you're going to have 440 base power, making Piercing Thrust the better abilities level first. You can level this second if you're going for straight damage, but as you will see soon and later on in the build, Lancelot can be played as a sort of tank too, but we'll save that one for later. Lancelot's third ability is Mount Up. This is considered a stance switch, although I would liken it a lot more to a Wheelix's first ability to get on Suku than I would an actual stance switch like that of Ul. While mounted, you gain a bonus 20% to your movement speed and have three new abilities. The first deals damage and slows in a line, the second roots enemies then deals damage in a circle, and the third makes you turn 180 degrees round on the horse. Helpful as it controls like Guan Yu and Hachiman's horses, and by that I mean it has no strafing and terrible turning circle. You jump off your horse, putting the skill on cooldown, if you use either of those first two mounted abilities, if you get stunned, or if you lose any of your health. While mounted, you also gain a shield though, which is super helpful for keeping you mounted even while taking damage. There is a very small initial shield, and then you gain a bigger shield over time as you remain on your horse, up to a maximum of 740. Lancelot's ultimate ability is the Grand Joust. You create a sort of long rectangular area that cripples enemies for 3 seconds as you mount up, gaining your full maximum shield immediately. You then charge forward at maximum speed, dealing damage to anyone hit while being CC immune yourself. As your ultimate ends, you remain mounted, although if you do get knocked off your horse or use any of the first two mounted abilities, it will put your third ability on cooldown. So, let's get into those tips, and my first tip is going to be how to build Lancelot. If you just want a quick build, try Bluestone Pendant or Eye of the Jungle if you are a jungler, then Jotun's Wrath, Transcendent, Soul Eater, Heartseeker, and Titan's Bane. But that will only really be viable for a few patches, I'm sure. This might seem regularly balanced items, make new items, and completely shift up metas. So I'm going to give you a little insight into why we pick each of these items now, but you can also subscribe and check out my other content as we regularly upload Smite gameplay with updated builds all the time. Lancelot is a very ability heavy god. He almost never uses basic attacks. You can basic attack cancel, it's nice and fun, but getting your abilities up more often is always good. Jotun's Wrath, which we currently evolve into Jotun's Ferocity's Glyph, when we have the spare gold, that is, gives us the cooldown we need for him. However, he is mana hungry, so unless you have this and blue buff, you're going to struggle for mana, which is where Transcendence comes in to help. Not only does it help with his mana troubles, but it also gives us a crazy amount of power, and as our first ability has insane power scaling, and our other abilities use it pretty well too, more power is exceptional for Lancelot. Next we picked up that Soul Eater, and this could easily have been Bloodforge too, but I lean into Soul Eater as my friends usually kill steal me all the time. 
We want an item like this to sustain us. As Lancelot doesn't really have an escape, his only small dashing ability, his first ability, is more used for damage and is very short, and he is really, really squishy. Once you commit, you are in. So we need to make sure we have a way to survive in the middle of the fight. You'll see I learned this the hard way from some of the background footage in a game where I went 15, 20, and 20 in a crazy game playing as Lancelot. Heartseeker we pick up again for its incredible power scaling and because it opens the door for us to actually hurt tanks a little. And Titan's Bane is kind of doing the same. In any meta there will be a couple of expensive tank murdering or huge power items and this is where you want to pick those up for assassins. You'll notice that I didn't mention Hydra's Lament for Lancelot despite most players and builds telling you to pick it up. I tried it and I hated it myself. Your ult and your third ability don't really let you use Hydra's passive as you cannot basic attack when you're mounted and your second ability knocks gods away, so you can't use it then either, even with the extended lance range. If you're buying hydras, that's fine, but it only really works with the first ability, and don't get me wrong, it, it hurts with that, and it creates quite a nice combo, but it's not for me, I think that there are too many good items out there at the moment. So, to wrap up the build, you want a lot of power, a little penetration, some mana, and some more power for good measure. My next tip is to learn Lancelot's bread and butter. It's a tip I do for every god because it is literally the key to being competent at a god. A god's bread and butter is their go-to combo, the skill usage that makes them tick, and without knowing it, you're gonna fall flat. So for Lancelot, this is actually your first two abilities. Don't get me wrong, to master Lancelot, you do need to master the horse, but these first two abilities on foot are his bread and butter. We've already discussed how his first ability does insane damage and should be maxed first, but it can be tricky to land both hits. After your first hit, the enemy god will usually stun you or dash away or just duke, making it harder to hit that second part, halving your potential damage. So in order to guarantee you get both hits, dash in with your one dealing damage, then immediately use your second ability to knock the enemy up, and as they are landing and your two finishes casting, hit them again with that first ability, the second charge of it, and there you have it, Lancelot's Bread and Butter, a high damage, super easy to hit, guaranteed combo. Tip number three is now a short and sweet one, and actually harkens back to the build a little. And that is just a comment on how many abilities and ability hits Lancelot has compared to other assassins and warriors. With both his ultimate and his third ability letting him mount up, he has five chances to use damaging abilities, but both his one and his two strike twice which means he has an insane potential to proc certain item effects, like Crusher and Heartseeker in their current form. Even ability lifesteal like Soul Eater is extra useful, or anti-heal from stuff like Brawler's Beatstick can be really easily applied by Lancelot. If there is any item for assassins that does something when an ability hits an enemy, consider it for Lancelot, as he has an excellent opportunity to abuse it. The next tip is a bit of a preview to tip 5, but we'll get into that beast in a minute. This one is more of a warning, your third ability goes on cooldown whenever you use your first two abilities on horseback, or get knocked off by a stun, or damage. That might sound normal to you, but this is true even if you mounted with your ultimate. If your third ability is up and off cooldown, and you use your ultimate, and leap off your horse with a 1 or 2, that third ability will also be on cooldown, even though you've never used it. One option to have is to engage with your third ability, jump off your horse with an attack, and then use your ultimate. If you combo this way around, mounted skills come back off cooldown. They are available anytime you mount up, and you will get to use the horse twice in quick succession. Another option you always have, very much like a Wheelix's mounted option, in that you can right click any time when mounted to dismount, and your third ability does not go on cooldown. So if you ult and don't need to deal damage anymore, or you just want to, you can right click to dismount for now, and then your 3 will still be up and ready to use. The final tip will be horse related again, although this one pertains to its shield. As I mentioned in the ability overview, when you mount up it will give you a quick instant shield, but that is so small even minions can kill it, so a little extra bonus tip in here, um, make sure you're mounting up safely and you don't have minion aggro or you'll be instantly demounted. Anyway. The shield that we want takes time to grow, but when it is maxed, will grow to 740 health strong. That is a huge shield. For reference, Geb's shield maxed out and with maximum scaling, so at level 20, is only 550 shielding. 
This can actually let you tank through some of the big hits. Even if it knocks you off your horse, if your shield eats 740 points of damage from a mage's ultimate, like a Kraken or a Rabim or something, you're going to have a pretty good fight after that. So make sure wherever possible, you are eating damage with that huge shield. Another little bonus tip, which actually turns Lancelot into a legitimate warrior in the solo lane, is to max your three after your one, so second overall. This means that by level 12, because we don't put points in our ultimate after the first one, when you have like a thousand or so health, you'll be getting a shield of 740. Nearly half of your health will be shielding, or, or to think of it in a better way, you will nearly double your health from the shield. With this, you can easily dive towers, eat all of the ability damage you want, and be a general nuisance, which is perfect for those solo lane warriors. So enjoy. Ciao.